Hi, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about Google Tag Manager. Now we're going to talk about what are tags, what is Google Tag Manager, how do you use it, I'll be giving a short demo of it, and I will close with some tips. As usual, I am Mark Kempman, I'm your digital navigator for this video, and if you like the video, click the like button, and if you want to subscribe to our channel, click the subscribe button down below. But before we start, I want to share something with you first. So Simply Learn has a new program, a new certificate certificate for digital marketing together with Purdue, with Meta, and it takes you through all the courses and all the topics of digital marketing that are relevant for you. It sets you up for Facebook's um, digital marketing exam where you learn everything about Facebook advertising, managing your Facebook page. So it's a very useful program that I can highly recommend you, uh, you sign up for. So click on the link to the website website you'll find the link in the description of the video below and check it out have a look we can highly recommend this course to you so without further ado let's get started the famous Google Tag Manager you might have heard of it before you might be asking yourself right now what is the heck is Google Tag Manager well let me tell you it's a tool that will make your life as a marketeer a lot easier it's a free tool from Google that lets you manage and deploy marketing and analytics tags or snippets of code on your website or on your mobile app without having to edit this code. Those tags trigger events like tracking all user interaction on your website. It's like having a personal assistant to help you with the technical stuff so you can focus on the creative side of things. The tool was introduced by Google in 2012 and since then it has become one of the most widely used tag management systems online. You might be wondering, now what are the tags? Don't worry about that, we'll cover that in the next slide. But in short, Google Tag Manager helps you simplify the process of managing tags and tracking using user behavior on your website. It's a user-friendly and efficient tool and it saves you a lot of time. Plus, who does, doesn't like a free tool that makes your life easier? But before we dive into the world of Google Tag Manager, yeah, let's talk a bit more about what the, this video will cover. So in this session, we'll cover a variety of topics related to Google Tag Manager. First, we'll discuss what Google Tags are and how they work. We'll then move on to what Google Tag Manager is and how it can help you manage your website tags more efficiently. Then we'll talk about why you need Google Tag Manager. We'll compare Google Tag Manager with Google Analytics and we'll discuss the benefits of using Google Tag Manager over other tag management solutions. We'll then go over how to set up Google Tag Manager step by step. I'll give you a short demo. So we'll make sure you have all the information that you need to be successful with Google Tag Manager. And finally, I'll give you some tips and tricks for using Google Tag Manager more efficiently. From naming conventions to version control, we'll share some of the best practices that can save you tons of time and headaches in the long run. And then by the end of this video, you should have a solid understanding of Google Tag Manager and how it can benefit you and your website. So before we dive into the specifics of the platform, let's take a moment to discuss Google Tags. So what are they? Well, simply put, they're snippets of code that allows you to track various actions and data on your website. They're like little spies. They keep an eye on what your visitors are doing and they report it back to you. For example, you can use Google Tags to track when someone clicks on a specific button on your website or how long they stay on a particular page or even if they abandon their shopping cart then this information can be used to improve your website and your marketing efforts. So without tags, you'll be flying blind when it comes to understanding how people are interacting with your website. But with Google Tags, you'll have a wealth of information and data at your fingertips. So let's then move on to Google Tag Manager. Google Tags are 
codes of snippet created by Google Tags that are designed to work with various Google tools like analytics, like Google Ads. They allow you to track user interactions, such as um, clicks, page views, and many more type of interactions. They're code snippets that are small pieces of code that you can add to your website to track user behavior and gather important data. So the beauty of these tags is that you don't need to be a coding expert to use them. With Google Tag Manager, you can easily add, modify, and remove those tags without having to touch the code on your website. You don't have to be a developer to do this. So if you're a marketeer or a data analyst or just someone who is interested in understanding how people interact with your website, these little snippets of code can provide a lot of valuable insights. But make sure you're using them correctly and always test your tags before publishing them to your live website. Google tags are not only snippets of code, but they are also used for tracking purposes. They allow you to track specific events on your website, like clicks on a button or form submissions or video plays. You can also track how users interact with your website, like how long they stay on a page, what pages they visit, how deep do they scroll on a page. And by tracking this user behavior, you can gain fantastic insights in how users engage with your website. And this can help you in optimizing your website as well to improve the user experience. For example, if you notice that many people are abandoning the shopping cart, you can use Google Tags to track the point where they leave the cart and adjust your website design or marketing strategy accordingly. Google Tags, another very important function of them is that you can use them for remarketing which means that you can target users who have already interacted with your website with a personalized ad. This can help increase conversions and customer retention. So when somebody visits your website, it will trigger the tag, yep, and then uh, it will activate the ad in Google Ads or in Facebook Ads, and then people will, that, that person that visited your website will then receive a personalized ad. So in short, Google Tags, they do not only provide important data on user behavior, but can also you can use it to use the data to improve your website and improve your marketing efforts. So very important in Google Tag Manager are also the containers. Yes, yeah, so there are, you use containers in Google Tag Manager. So what are containers? Think of them as the holding area for your tag. You can create multiple containers for different website sections or even for individual pages. Yeah, now let's dive a bit deeper into the most used tags in Google Tag Manager. The first one is the Google Analytics tag, yeah, which is used to track the website traffic and behavior. So when you want to track your websites and analytics by Google, you have to add a tag on every page of your website. And when people visit that page, that will trigger Google Analytics that it will track that interaction on your website. Another very popular tag is the Facebook Pixel tag, which helps track conversions from Facebook ads. The third tag that's commonly used is the AdWords conversion tracking tag, which is used to track conversions from Google AdWords campaigns. And fourth, there is, for instance, the Hotjar tag, which is used for website heat mapping and user behavior analysis. Finally, there is also the Google optimization tag, which is used for A-B testing and for personalization. These are just a few of the many tags available in Google Tag Manager, but they're definitely the most commonly used ones. So now that you know what containers are and the most used tags in Google Tag Manager, you should be able to start creating your own tags and your own containers. So let's get into the details here. Let's look at how you manage your tags using Google Tag Manager. So Google Tag Manager is a powerful tool that allows you to manage all your website tags in one place without having to code anything on your website. You don't have to get into the code of your website. You don't have to add any code for you on your website. Google Tag Manager will do that. Gone are those days that you have to ask your developer 
to add tracking codes to your website or landing pages. With Google Tag Manager, you can do it yourself. You can easily add, modify and deploy tags to your website without any technical knowledge. So with Google Tag Manager or GTM as people call it, you can manage tags for all kinds of purposes, such as tracking, remarketing, conversion tracking, and you can also create triggers that determine when and where the tags are fired on your website. So GTM is made to make your life easier. And with the help of this tool, you'll be able to streamline your digital marketing efforts when it comes to tracking your website performance and make marketing data traffic and make data driven decisions to help grow your business. So let's dive in and explore the world of Google Tag Manager. So Google Tag Manager is like a superhero. It saves the day and it helps you manage all the tags on your website. It's free. Yeah, it's from Google and it helps you simplify that process of adding and managing multiple tracking tags. And we've gone through those tags, yeah, like Google Analytics, Facebook Analytics, and you don't need a developer to get involved. The beauty about GTM is that it provides an intuitive interface that lets you set up, test and deploy the tags quickly. So you can focus on optimizing your website without having to worry about managing those code snippets. With GTM, you can also easily update your tags, easy add new ones or remove old ones, all in one central location. Yes, so think of GTM as the conductor of a well-orchestrated band. It brings all your tracking tags together and ensures they play in harmony so you can hear a beautiful melody of data insights. So summing up, Google Tag Manager is like having a personal assistant for your website, taking care of all the tracking tags so you can focus on what really matters and that is making your website look awesome and work awesome for you. One of the biggest benefits of Google Tag Manager's interface is that it allows you to manage all your tags in one place. Yeah, so that means no more searching through the lines of code to find that one tag that causes the issue on your site. With GTM, you can just easily add, edit or remove tags. But there's more. The GTM interface also offers a preview mode so you can test your tags before they go live. Yeah, and let's not forget about the custom variables and the triggers that you can use. With GTM, you can set up variables to track specific user behavior and create triggers to fire tags based on those actions. It's like having your own spy network tracking every move your users make on your website. Yeah, so Google's Tag Manager interface is like having a trusty sidekick that takes care of all your tagging needs. It's easy to use, it offers a preview mode and allows you to create custom variables and triggers. So then why do I need Google Tag Manager? Well, let's face it, websites today are loaded with all kinds of tags, from tracking codes to conversion pickles, and it can be a hassle to manage all of those. Yet yeah, not to mention the headache you have to go through and manage to wait for your web developer to make even the slightest. This is where Google Tag Manager comes in to save your day. Yeah, with Google Tag Manager, you have complete control over all your tags without having to rely on the developer. It also allows you to easily set up the tracking and conversion events. Plus, it makes it easy to test and debug your tests before they go live. Yep, and let's not forget about time-saving benefits of GTM. Yeah, with everything in one place, you can streamline your workflow and get more done in less time. So... Adding tracking codes, as we know, can be a headache. Yep, certainly you don't want those headaches. And that's why Google Tag Manager comes in. It provides this user-friendly interface to easily manage all of your tracking codes in one place. Not only does it make managing those codes easier, but it also saves time and eliminates the need for technical expertise. You don't have to be a computer wizard to use Google Tag Manager. With it, you can easily add, edit and remove tracking codes with just a few clicks. Plus, it allows for greater customization and flexibility. And that will give you better insights 
and therefore better decision making. So why do we need Google Tag Manager? To simplify our lives, save time and make managing tracking codes a lot easier. Trust me, once you start using it, you won't know how you ever lived without it. Managing tags, as I said earlier, can be like juggling to keep track of all the different balls and make sure that they don't drop. Now with Google Tag Manager, it's like having an assistant who's an expert juggler. Without it, as I told you before, it can be a real headache. You have to go into the code of each individual page and add or remove those tags manually. And if you have a lot of tags, I tell you, that could be a lot of code that you have to sift through. But again, with GTM, you can manage all your tags in one place and easily add or remove them without having to touch the code on your website. So if you have multiple tags that you need to keep track of on your website, GTM is a must. It simplifies the process and helps ensure that your tags are implemented correctly and efficiently. And thereby you have more time to work on those things that really matter. So another key benefit is how easy it makes updating those tags on your website. Again, you don't rely on developers to add and remove tracking codes. You don't lose time with it. You have full control over all your tags, allowing you to add them quickly, modify or remove them whenever you need to. Think of it like a magic wand for your website's tracking. No more waiting for someone else to do it for you. You're in the driver's seat now. Plus with the intuitive interface of GTM, it's so easy to do, even if you're not a coding wizard. So you can easily fix errors and typos in your tags without having to wait for the developer to do this. It's like having a safety net to your website tracking, ensuring that your data is always accurate and up to date. Yes, so if you want to take control of your website's tracking, then Google Manager is Google Tag Manager is absolutely a must. Another reason why you need Google Tag Manager is that it allows you to easily manage multiple tags from different sources, like Google Analytics, like AdWords, and even third-party tags. So you no longer have to, to worry about missing out on valuable data because you can now keep track of all those different tracking codes. But it also allows you to prioritize and organize those tags so you can ensure that the most important ones are firing correctly and in the right order. And with the built-in error checking and debugging tools, and we'll talk about that later, you can quickly identify and fix issues as soon as they come up. So with Google Tag Manager, you can make updates to your tags without having to touch the code so that gives you so much extra time. You win a lot of time where you can focus on those things that really matter. So let's talk about the difference between Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Yes, Google Analytics is a powerful tool that helps you analyze your website's traffic, the user behavior, and the performance of your website. It's like that agent that gathers information on your website visitors. On the other hand, Google Tag Manager is like the secret agent's assistant. Yeah, it helps manage and deploy all the tracking codes or tags on your website. Think of it like a personal assistant who takes care of all the tedious tasks. So the main agent, Google Analytics in this case, can focus on the important stuff. While both tools are important to your website success, they do serve different purposes. Google Analytics gives you insight into your website's performance, while GTM helps you manage and organize the tracking codes that feed into Google Analytics. In other words, Google Analytics is like the captain of the ship navigating the waters, while GTM is the navigator who helps guide the captain and make sure everything is running smoothly. So whether you're an analytics expert or a novice, knowing the difference between these two tools will help you better understand how to optimize your website's performance. Yeah, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. Yeah, so if you're using Google Analytics, you know what it means when you feel like you're drowning in data. 
Well, that's because GA is a very powerful analytics tool, but it doesn't come with any tag management capabilities. And that's where GTM comes in. GTM and Google Analytics may seem similar at first, but they serve different purposes. GA helps you track and analyze your website traffic, while GTM helps you manage tracking your tags. It's like GA is the map that tells you where you are, and GTM is the compass that helps you navigate to where you want to go. Without GTM, you have to manually add the tracking tags to your website code every time you want to track a new event or behavior. That's like trying to build a car with your bare hands instead of using tools. GTM simplifies the process by letting you add and manage tags through a user-friendly interface. So while GA is great for analyzing data, it is not equipped to handle tag management. That's why GTM is a necessary tool for any website owner or marketeer looking to streamline their tracking efforts. Now that we understand the basic differences between GTM and Google Analytics, let's talk about one of the most important aspects of these tools, data collection. Google Analytics is primarily designed to collect and analyze website traffic data. It helps you understand things like where your visitors are coming from, which pages are most popular, and how long people are spending on your site. On the other hand, GTM is focused on collecting data about specific actions or events on your website, like a form submission or a button click. It allows you to track these interactions and create custom tags that trigger based on the data collected. Think of it this way, if Google Analytics is a map of the traffic flow on your website, GTM is the traffic light that helps you control and manage that flow. By using GTM to manage your tags and tracking, you can get more granular insights into behavior of your users and optimize your website accordingly. And since GTM is designed to work seamlessly with Google Analytics, you can easily combine the insights from both tools to get a complete picture of your website's performance. Yep, so whether you're a marketeer or a developer, using both GTM and Google Analytics can help you make data-driven decisions and improve your website's overall effectiveness. So another important difference is the way the tools report on the data and how they visualize the data. Yes, so you'll be happy to know that Google Analytics, of course, has some very nifty visualization tools. With Google Analytics, you can create custom dashboards and reports that show your website data in all sorts of fancy ways. If you want a graph that shows the number of people who visited your website from a specific country, Google Analytics can do that. If you want it to in a pie chart that shows the breakdown of traffic sources, Google Analytics can do that. But Google Tag Manager doesn't offer any visualization tools. What it does offer is the ability to collect data and send it to Google Analytics where you can then turn it in charts and graphs. While GTM may not have the eye candy that GA has, it, has to be, it is the behind the scenes workhorse that makes it all possible. Think of GTM as the stage crew of a Broadway show. They may not be in the spotlight, but without them, the whole production falls apart. So when it comes to user friendliness, GTM and Google Analytics couldn't be more different. GTM is like your fun, easygoing friend who's always up for a good time, while GA is like your uptight neighbor who complains about your music being too loud. GTM's interface is designed with the user in mind, making it easy to navigate and understand. You don't need to be a coding genius to use it. In fact, you don't even need to know how to code at all. Plus, its drag and drop functionality makes adding and managing tags a breeze. Now, on the other hand, GA is a bit of a dinosaur. It's a bit more complex and it can take time getting used to. It's like trying to assemble a piece of furniture without any instructions. It may take you a while to figure it out and you might up, end up with some extra pieces. You don't know what you do with it. So overall, GTM's user-friendly interface makes it a clear winner in this category. 
With GTM, you can spend less time struggling with a difficult interface and more time analyzing your data and making informed decisions. So when it comes to pricing, Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics have different approaches. Google Analytics has a free version available to everyone, which is good news, particularly when you just start out and when you don't have a large budget. However, there are some, some limitations in the free version and that may not be sufficient for more complex businesses, but they can also upgrade to a premium version of Google Analytics. On the other hand, Google Tag Manager offers a free version as well as a paid version. That of, and the paid version offers more advanced features and integrations. The pricing for the paid version is based on the number of monthly sessions your website has. So which one is better for your business? It really depends on your needs and budget. If you're just starting out to have a smaller website, Google Analytics might be the way to go. But if you have a larger website or need more advanced features, the paid version of Google Tag Manager might be worth the investment. Now remember, the best way to determine which tool is right for you is to evaluate your business needs and your budget carefully and make the right decisions accordingly. Right, so let's have a look at how you set up Google Tag Manager. Let's dig in and let me give you a demo of how to use Google Tag Manager. Right, so here we are on Google Tag Manager. And this is the screen where you will have a list of your accounts. Now, here is a, an empty account. I've only created TubeMark01 and uh, there is no tags on this. There is nothing on this. So this is how you will find your tag manager when you sign in or sign up with your Google account. Yeah, so the first thing you're going to do is to create an account and I've created an account already, which is TubeMark01. If you want to create another account, you just click on Create Account. You say, what is your account name? What is the country? Uh, do you want to share data with Google anonymously? What is the container name? That could be the website, for instance. Yeah, but if you don't put a container setup immediately, yeah, then you just click Create, and then you will have another account under this. But we're sticking for the demo purposes with TubeMark01. So here I'm going to click to create a container, which I could have done as well when I created the account. But let's, for simplicity purposes, let's click here, create a container. And then it's going to ask the same questions. The, the, the website is in my case riyadfarasha.com. There we go. And it's going to be for the web. It could be for iOS. It could be for Android, for accelerated mobile pay, uh, pages, or for server-side instrumentation, what have you. But the most obvious one is for your web. So you could also set tags for your apps. Yep, so on either iOS or Android. But let's focus on the web. And then you just click Create, as simple as that. And that will set you up for Google Tag Manager set up for riyadfarasha.com in my case. Now, here you see a piece of code. So you need to tell every web page on your website that it is ready to accept tags from Google Tag Manager, which means that there will be a piece of code that has to be installed on every page. Yeah, so you paste this code in the header and you paste this immediately after the opening body tag. Now what you will see yeah, is that there is still that there are the, the CMS systems, the content management systems like WordPress and many others as well. They have plugins that you can, um, can get to actually install this code for you. Now, you then don't actually have to install the code, but what you need to enter in the plugin is basically this number. Yeah, if I click on here, it takes me to that same page of code, but I don't have to do that when I use a plugin in, for instance, WordPress. So I just copy and paste this number, and then Google um, will connect with WordPress and uh, the Tag Manager will be set up 
for the website because otherwise of course I would be able to put a tag on every website out there so there need to be some sort of a verification so you go into the backend system of your CMS you get a plugin for Google Tag Manager and then you enter this number then WordPress will connect with Google Tag Manager create a link and then you know Riyadh Farasha is yours and then you can start using the Tag Manager now here you see the interface it's very straightforward you have um, your overview of your tags you have the tags themselves the triggers remember we talked about that in the earlier sections the variables you can create folders and here is a list of templates all the things that we talked about in the uh, in the earlier presentation here you can have your version control and here you have your admin where you can um, manage users for instance and the admin rights or the viewing rights yeah, that they uh, they have so here you have if you want to create a new tag here you see what you are editing at the moment here you see changes that have not been published remember we talked about the preview mode as well you can activate that here then if you're happy with your tag then you click the submit button Google Tag Manager will then connect with your website and the tags will be installed. So each tag comes with triggers. Yeah, so because obviously the tag that you put on the pages of your website, they need to be triggered by something. That could be a, um, a page view, it could be a filling in a form, watching a video, um, what have you. So let's go and create a tag. There are two ways to create a tag. I can go here on new tag or I can go here on tags. Yep, uh, so let's just click here, create a new tag. So that takes me to the page where I can create my tag. And there is the name of the tag, that is Riyadh Demo. Yep, I can also put it in a folder. And then you will see for each tag setup, there is a configuration and there is the trigger. So the trigger is the event that takes place when you want, uh, what you, when you want to trigger the, um, the, the tag code. Yes, so let's click here on choose a tag type. And here you have a whole library of templates, of tags that have already been uh, created. So there is, for instance, the Google Ana Analytics tag. There is the standard universal analytics and there is the Google Analytics 4 configuration. And be aware that by July 2023, Universal Analytics will stop tracking data. So you will all have to go through the, pro through the process to set up the Google Analytics 4 tag on your website. If you don't have a template, yeah, I remember you saw the templates here on the left menu on your dashboard as well. You can then just add the custom HTML code. For instance, if you get a tag from Facebook, the so-called Facebook pixel for retargeting, you would do that through the custom HTML. But let me first go and show you, let's say, the Google Analytics 4 configuration. So very straightforward. Here is the tag, so I don't have to worry about that. That has the, the, the tag code. The only thing I need to do is put in my Google Analytics measurement ID. That is an ID that I get in Google Analytics, so Tag Manager will know which analytics to connect to. So let's say, I'm just for demo purposes, do a random number, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so now that we've set this up, we now need to define the trigger. So the trigger is what will trigger the tag. Yeah, what event will trigger the tag? And there's a whole range of triggers that you can specify. For this purpose, we just want the all pages trigger. Yeah, so we want this code to be installed on every page of the website, and we want to trigger the tag when somebody views that page. When somebody then views that page, it triggers the tag, the tag will connect with Google Analytics, and Google will then do the data collection of that particular page that is as simple as it is so i click save and now this tag has been saved here under Riyadh demo as simple as that is 
So here I see the tags, and I now have one tag here for Google Analytics. So now what I can do, I can actually preview the tag. But because I haven't connected my Riyadh for Russia account to this particular tag account, yeah, I can't show it. But when you could click on the preview, it will debug the tag as it were, it will connect with your website and then it will test if the tag is working. When you're happy with it, when it is working, you then click submit and then the tag will be added to every page on your website. So that's basically the essence how Google Tag Manager works. So here you can have an overview of the triggers and you can create triggers. Yeah, so I can click the new button to create a trigger, choose a trigger type to begin the setup. And here you see a whole range of triggers that you can use that for a trigger setup. So it could be a page view, it could be a window loaded, it could be an element visibility or a form submission. I like to scroll that. So if somebody scrolls more than um, 60 or 70% of the page, that could be a trigger when somebody watches the YouTube video, etc. So lots of different triggers that you can specify and add to your tag. So that is one thing. The other thing that we talked about in the presentation as well are the variables. Yep, so here you see the different variables. These are the built-in variables. They're available for many of the most commonly used tag and trigger configurations. Yeah, so they can be used just like user-defined variables. Or you can create your new, your own user-defined variables. Yeah, so variable configuration, that's where you can specify URL, you can have page variables, page elements, or utilities, so different things that you can specify here, yeah, on the variables for your um, for your uh, for your for your tags and for the triggers. Yep. So and there's more variable types in the community template gallery. Yep. So those are your variables, and we already talked about the template. So that is basically all there is to using Google Tag Manager. So you create an account. In the account, you create a container. In the container, it takes you to your workspace. And in the workspace, you create tags. Yep, and then in a tag, you combine a tag with a trigger. Then you can test it. And when you're happy with it, you click Submit. And then the tag will be added to the website. Now, to check if the tag has been added to the website, there is a really useful tool that Google has available, and that is the Tag Assistant Legacy by Google. It is a Chrome plugin, and uh, you will see in the, um, the, uh, the description of the video, um, below the video, um, Simply Learn will, have given, will give you the link to download the Tag Assistant Legacy. Basically, how does that work? If you go to a website, let's say simplylearn.com, what I then do, I activate, I enable the Google Tag Assistant Legacy. I'm doing then a refresh of the page, and then you see here the tags that have been set up on this page. There is the global site tag, there is the Google Analytics tag, and there is the Google Tag Manager. And there is some more. There is a Google Ads Remarketing tag, which is not operational at the moment. Yep, so green means there is a potential issue. Blue is that it's okay. Red is it's not working. Yes, so that's what you can check for, uh, for Google. So really useful tool that you can use. There's also a similar tool for Facebook. If you want to check the Facebook uh, tags on this page, you can go and there's the Facebook Metapixel Helper. You will find a link to this in the description of the video as well. And you can get it on the Chrome Store. These are free plugins. You just click on it. Yep, and then here you see there is the Metapixel yeah, for page view. 
uh, for view content, and there's one pixel found on the website. Yes, yeah, so that is how you can do that. Now, how would you do the page, the, the Facebook pixel? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you go to your workspace. Yeah, you're gonna add a new tag. And you will see that the tag type, you don't see the Facebook pixel in here. So what you do is you go to custom HTML. And the only thing you have to do here is paste the Facebook pixel um, HTML code that you get on the Facebook um, business manager. Yeah, so when you set up your advertising, you can set up retargeting, and they, when you set it up properly, you're getting your piece of HTML code, and you just paste that here. Okay, and then when you're happy with that, you call here the Facebook pixel. Yep, so you have, you've pasted the code, you click save. I need to select a trigger, of course. Yeah, so I'm gonna add the trigger. The trigger is page views, all pages. I can specify specific pages as well. Yeah, and then I just click save. Of course, it hasn't got the code here, but now I have two tags on my, um, uh, on my workspace. Yep, and then I can preview it, see if it works, and if it works, I click submit, and we're up and running. Okay, that concludes the demo of Google Tag Manager, so let's go back to the slides and let's close the presentation with some tips and tricks. So now that you know how to use Google Tag Manager, let's close today's videos with some tips and tricks for GT. My first tip to you is to use naming conventions. Yeah, they are very important and they help keep your tags, triggers and variables organized and easy to manage. In a naming convention, you should consider the context and purpose of each component, such as the prefix indicating the type of tag or trigger, followed by a descriptive name. A clear and consistent naming convention streamlines the tracking and helps with the maintenance and the scalability of your GTM implementation. Second tip I can give you is to make sure that you test your tags before the deployment. One of the key features of GTM is the ability to test your tags before they go live. Yeah, you can use the preview feature in GTM. It allows you to simulate a visitor's behavior on your website and see how tags will fire in real time. You could also use the debug mode to see more detailed information on how the tags are firing and any errors that may be occurring. It is important to test your tags before deployment to make sure that they are working properly and capture the data that you need. It will help you avoid making costly mistakes and, and ensure that your data is accurate and reliable. Yeah, by testing your tags before they go live, you can also identify and fix any issues before they impact your website's performance or user experience. The next tip I can give you is to use the preview mode. Yeah, Google Tag Manager's preview mode is a very powerful feature that allows you to test your website tracking and tags before publishing them. It lets you see how your tags fire, how the data is collected, and that helps you to identify issues before you go live. So with preview mode, you can simulate the firing of tags based on user interactions and test how your tags behaved in various scenarios. Preview mode is an essential tool to ensure that your tracking and your tags are working as they are supposed to do. It gives you the confidence in your data collection and the analysis. Now, the next tip is the data layer functionality in uh, Google Tag Manager. Yeah, using a data layer in Google Tag Manager allows you to store and access data about your website or app that can be used by tags, triggers and variables. It's a JavaScript object that contains information about the user's interaction with your website or app, such as paid views, form submissions, product details, and more. 
and by utilizing a data layer, you can simplify the implementation of various tracking and marketing, marketing tools, making it easier to customize your analytics and advertising solutions. It can also help you improve the accuracy and consistency of your data collection. Thereby, it reduces errors and it reduces duplications. My next tip is to use variables. In Google Tag Manager, variables are used to define and capture dynamic values that are used by tags and triggers. These values can include information like a page URL, field values, click element attributes, and so on. By using variables, you can create more flexible and powerful tags and triggers, enabling you to better track and analyze user behavior on your website or on your app. Variables can also simplify the implementation of various marketing and analytics solutions by allowing you to reuse the same data across multiple tags and triggers. This can help you save time, reduce errors, and making it easier to maintain and update your tracking setup. Then there is the use of folders. Folders in Google Tag Manager are used to organize and group tags, triggers, and variables, and they organize them in logical categories. That can help you better manage and navigate large and complex tracking setups by providing a clear and structured view of your implementation. So by using folders, you can easily find and update specific components of your tracking setup, improving the efficiency of your workflow. And they can also help collaborate with other teams by providing a shared view of your tracking implementation. This can make sure that everybody is on the same page and follows the same naming convention and best practices. Thereby, you reduce the risk of errors and the risk of confusion. So the seventh tip is to use templates. Templates in Google Tag Manager provide pre-built configurations for commonly used tags and variables, making it easier to set up and use various marketing and analytics solutions. You've seen them in the demo. They can be created by Google, their third-party vendors, or by yourself, and they can be shared across accounts and across containers. By using templates, you reduce the time and effort needed to implement complex tracking solutions. Thereby, then you can then focus on analyzing the data and improving your marketing strategy. They can also help you ensure that tags and variables are implemented correctly and consistently, thereby reducing your error and improving the accuracy and the reliability of your data collection. So there's a few more tips and tricks to go. The next one, make sure that you review and audit your Google Tag Manager setup. It's very important that you check regularly that your tracking tags are firing correctly and provide accurate relevant data for your analysis. By reviewing your tracking tags, your triggers, your data layer, you can identify any errors or issues. You should also check for duplicate or unnecessary tags and ensure that your website's performance is not being impacted by the tags. You should also review the user permissions and access to Google Tag Manager to make sure that only authorized users can edit or view your tags. By regularly reviewing your version history, you can identify any changes or updates made that may have affected your tags or triggers. Yes, yeah, so a review and audit is essential to ensure that your tracking data is accurate and reliable. Now, another one which is very important in relation to the, um, the regular sort of audit is to make sure that you use version control in Google Tag Manager. That's a very powerful feature that allows you to keep track of changes made in the containers and easily roll back to previous versions if necessary. So you can create a new version of the container each time a change is made, which then can be viewed and compared to previous versions. It helps you to collaborate more effectively so each team member can see what changes have been made and when they have been made. It also provides a level of accountability and helps prevent accidental changes that could negatively impact your data collection. It's a very important best practice for managing and maintaining accurate 
and reliable data coming from your Google Tag Manager. And then finally, make sure that you stay up to date on Google Tag Manager. The Google tools, they change regularly, they change often. Yeah, so you need to make sure that you know what the latest features can offer you. So follow the official Google Tag Manager blog and the Google Analytics blog. You can also join the Google Tag Manager community forums. There's lots of webinars about it. You can subscribe to newsletters from digital marketing blogs and websites that cover Google Tag Manager. And then of course you can follow industry experts on social media platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn. It's important to regularly check for updates to ensure that you are aware of new features, changes or best practices. And then there's of course also Google Tag Manager's courses that you can attend and training sessions to deepen your understanding and knowledge of Google Tag Manager. Right, so that's a wrap, a short introduction to Google Tag Manager. If you want to know more about Google Tag Manager, check out the various Simply Learn courses. Google Tag Manager is covered in the various digital marketing courses. If you like the video, click the like or the share button. And of course, click the subscribe button down below if you want to subscribe to our channel to join our exciting learners community on YouTube. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you at the next video. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.